This is a special video for elementary teachers, especially pre-K through first grade teachers who are interested in using Google Classroom with their students. Um, I fully believe that early elementary students are fully capable of being successful in Google Classroom and the Google environment, but it does require a little bit of planning and preparation and some realistic expectations as well. So I'm going to give you some tips to help out the beginning of your school year. Now, you may want to consider holding off on introducing Google Classroom to your uh, young students until you do some basic computer uh, literacy training. Um, just making sure they understand how to turn the device on, how to you know find different keys in the keyboard, talking about the difference between upper and lowercase letters, things like that. So you may want to spend a week, a couple weeks, kind of reviewing some of those process um, before you even introduce Google Classroom. Uh, this is a fun activity here. Uh, I can do some letter recognition by building a little paper uh, keyboard using a manila folder. That's uh, something you can uh, get started with. I would do all of this even before introducing the login process. Another thing that you're going to want to um, consider is um, just uh, the, the keyboard itself and even some mouse skills. Um, got some resources here that will help just with things like the shift key, the space bar, volume control, uh, things of that nature. Uh, the trackpad as well, if you're using Chromebooks or laptops, um, you know, making sure that students know how to left click, right click, scroll, uh, basic things like that. There's tons and tons of different online games that you can play to teach some of those mouse and trackpad skills. Um, I'll link to those in the comments for this video. At some point in the future, once you feel that those basics are under your um, uh, or have been mastered by your students, uh, you're going to want to begin introducing the login process. And there's some tips I have for uh, making that a little more manageable. Um, first of all, I would strongly um, advise you to um, provide each student a personal <clears throat> Google account. Now, there's three different ways that you can access Google. Um, tools. You can um, do some things without an account. So for example, I can create a Google document, give the link uh, to my students, and they can access that Google document created by me, even if they don't have their own account. That's okay, but it does really minimize what you're able to do. You certainly can't use Google Classroom. Um, there are other teachers who uh, have used a class account. So every student is logging in with the same username and password. That is better than no account, but it also presents some limitations especially when it comes to Google Classroom because that Google treats that as a single user and so you're not going to be able to send assignments or track your students work individually. Personal accounts where every kid has their own login is really the best way to go and that's what I would encourage you to do even though it does take more time for the login process. Long term it will be very beneficial. I would encourage you to develop some type of a login card initially uh, so that your students have their username and password um, where they can copy it down, especially as they're learning this process. I'll give you access to this template here. I just did this in Google Drawing um, and uh, students will probably need this for the first quarter or so as they get uh, signed in. Um, a little modification to that that a teacher um, showed me, which is kind of cool. Um, she went ahead and assigned a color to each row in the keyboard. So it's kind of hard to see, but the, you know, the top row is red, yellow, green, blue, and that corresponds to the letters um, here. So if a student says, oh, where's the letter you located? They say, all right, it's in the letter or the uh, yellow um, row, and that just makes it a little bit easier for them to find that particular letter on the keyboard, especially when they are uh, just getting started. So that's a little tip. Um, there's some other really great tips uh, like this. Um, available um, on this podcast episode here. Um, uh, this is Jolanda Netterveld. She's a kindergarten, uh, early elementary computer teacher from West Michigan. Uh, she has some just brilliant insights, including that login card. Um, you can listen to this episode if you just uh, search for the Chromebook Classroom in um, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Stitcher, um, uh, you'll, you'll find the episode. It's really, really worth your time uh, listening to that. 
So we've got our login cards. We've passed those out to students. Um, and I would encourage you to set aside a day or a little bit of time for each day to participate in what I like to call the Login Olympics. It's a pretty simple uh, strategy. Um, First of all, you're going to get your students uh, seated at their desks. I would recommend getting out your Chromebooks or whatever device you're using. Um, have those devices on the desk, but uh, do not have the students sign in. And then you're going to say, all right, kids, we're going to participate in the Login Olympics. When I say go, you're going to sign in. I'm going to record how long it takes everybody in the class to sign in. Now, that first time you do this, it's going to be a bit of a disaster. So be prepared for that. It might take 10, 15 minutes to get every student signed in. That's fine. Go ahead and write that time up. Up on your whiteboard somewhere in the room. We're going to be keeping these times uh, for um, many weeks. If you have time that day, I would encourage you to do this two or three times in a row, and you should see some pretty rapid um, improvement from that first to the second to the third time, and that will be encouraging for your students. Go ahead and set a goal as a class. Um, say that you know our, our class goal is to get everybody signed in in less than three minutes. Okay, so that's a challenging goal. You're not going to hit that the first day, but it gives your students uh, something to uh, to aim for, to shoot for. So every day you're going to participate in this challenge and see how fast you can get. Hopefully those times will keep coming down. You'll just continue writing those up on the board until you hit your class goal of one minute or three minutes, whatever you decide. Um, instruct your students. Some will be faster than others. Instruct them, say, hey, if you are able to get signed in, if you're faster at this, feel free, you know, help a friend out if they're struggling. Um, again, we want this to be a class challenge, not an individual challenge. So we succeed as a group, not as individuals. This will take some time, but to, over the course, certainly by uh, the end of the first semester, um, you should be you know, able to get everybody or at least 95% of your students signed in. The reality is that every day you're going to have one or two kids who, for whatever reason, have trouble with this. You can help one or two students. You can't help 25 or 35 students simultaneously. So that's really the goal of, uh, of doing this. Now, there are a couple of other things that you can look into to simplify the login process at the elementary level. These are going to require um, support of your IT department. These aren't things you can do on your own. Um, there's a company called Clever that uh, offers a really nifty service where students get a little QR code like this. And rather than having to type in their username and password, they just uh, hold up their QR code and it scans it, which enters their username and password for them. This is a free service for schools. There's no cost to it, uh, but you do have to integrate your systems together in order for this to work. So this is called Clever Badges. Uh, you can send that to your IT department and they can uh, look it up. Another very simple thing that I would encourage you to do is to ask your IT department to autofill your domain. Um, this only works on Chromebooks, but uh, can really speed things up. So when you sign in, you usually have to enter your username at, you know, myschool.org. And unfortunately, a lot of schools have very long, complicated domains. You know, it's vicksburg.k12.mi.us. That's a lot for a kid to type in. Google has the ability on a Chromebook to, um, automatically enter in the at portion of the email address. So all the kid has to enter is their actual username, which is much more manageable for younger students. This can be set up in a matter of minutes, um, but you have to have access to your Google admin dashboard in order to, uh, to do so. That'll, that'll speed things up uh, quite a bit. That's a quick list of um, ideas for improving and speeding up the login process at the elementary classroom. If you have other tips, would love to hear about them. Comment on this video. Let me know. Good luck in your class this year.